to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again. It is Saturday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert, southern Idaho. And joining me tonight is the gunslinger. The high, windy desert of high, southern Idaho. The high, windy, smoky desert. We yeah. got to add smoky, and there we have us a, we have us a, what, just got to be like wildfire number five. Probably. We've had four in the South Hills already. Yeah. And we're coming on this way early. There ain't going to be much left. There's not much left. And then we got one out in the desert right now. It was up to 800 acres. And, the, and then the wind started blowing. Oh, yeah. So it's going to go pretty good now. Yeah. The grassy plains <clears> out there. <throat> so the whole state is burning down. We're melting. Hey, but at least they have a, a fire barrier around the bombing range. So, you know, at least the Air Force is good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so how you been, Mr. Mister Gunslinger, Mr. Mark? Just uh, good, I guess. Uh, pretty quick week, a uh, short week, because I got a little extra. I guess they gave me an extra day off because of the 4th. So. Yeah, Friday off? No, I had uh, Tuesday. So oh, like middle gotcha. of the week, it was weird. Gotcha. But you got, I didn't uh, know what to do. Did, did you just sit at home? I just kind of sat at home. I'm like, I... I'd rather be working, you know, I'll making tell you money. What, but... It's actually been too hot to do freaking anything. That's true. It's like you don't even want to move. And you probably have AC at your house, all right? Yeah, we do. I don't. We've I... been having like intermittent um, power outages. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, I come to find out, I think it was something at the beat dump where the a power line got knocked down and it hit the every time it hit the ground, the power would go out or something. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah. That's not good if you got a power line hitting the ground. Well, it's, yeah, I, I couldn't figure out, like, you know, power went out and then, you know, I'd get everything back going again. And then, and it was just a glitch. It wasn't like it didn't go out completely. Right. Just enough to, like, where I had to reset the clocks and the, the oh, satellite gotcha. and everything. It's like, oh my gosh. So, um, I'm going to come over and stay at your house, though, because you got AC. I don't, and I'm melting. <laughs> you don't have AC here? Nope. Oh wow! I've got it, but it, it doesn't work, and I've. Uh, oh. It's you know typically we're in Idaho. We don't we don't we don't need to fix this. I mean it it it's usually you open your window shades the right way. Yeah. You you put the fans in. You're sure. strategic about all this. I, it's been freaking hot though. Yeah. If it's going to be this hot, we need like 50, 60 degree nights. Well, I mean, they didn't always have AC. Uh, I've so. never. I don't think I. The only house I've ever had AC in since I've been married was uh, in Kansas, and oh. you needed it over there. Yeah. Well, just open up your freezer and put a fan in there. and Why, well, my food's going to melt. Oh, that's true. Can't do that. Well, get another freezer just for nothing. <laughs> so anything exciting going on at the gun store? Anything at all? Uh, Any no, I mean, we're seeing a little resurgence of ammo, and it's been a little better, uh, you know, a little more... Uh, uh, quantity and uh, consistency yeah uh so really the main problem we're having now is that people just keep buying it up so, so they're still buying it like crazy yeah it's like if you know if everybody just slow down there'd be there'd be ammo back on the shelves again um i really believe that well, you i just guys think are, everybody's going nuts about it still you guys got a whole bunch of guns though i mean firearms are coming back for sure yeah firearms right? are yeah we're not having an issue with firearms uh certain ones like certain specific ones maybe that right you know really popular or whatever but but no everything's making a resurgence so uh i just wish i don't want to say wish things would go back to normal because who knows what normal is but yeah but that's kind of it'll never go back it'll to normal. never go back so yeah, it'll never it'll never go back to normal. As close as we can get there. Right, right. So no characters coming in there, no nothing, no, no. hand you loaded firearms. We get a lot of. I need to know, so man. So I had a guy uh, talking. I don't know. We we always get like these uh, Delta Special Forces operator, <laughs> and they look know, like they can't even seals get guys up off the couch, right? And they're like, "Oh, I took one of these into Baghdad and this and that," and I'm like. Okay, you you did, huh? That's not not what I would have taken into Baghdad, but okay, you know. 
Uh, anyway. So, I mean, are these guys, are they, I mean, you think they have any military or are they uh, just... Possibly, but I, I think they maybe just have maybe a little delusional. I, I mean, the guy was... I mean, you're gonna this is really gonna make you laugh i've been in there before when this has happened yeah but this is uh this is the by far the worst i've ever seen right um the guy i was showing him uh it's a replica it's made by air venturi air is the key word here yes yes <laughs> it's an air rifle yes yes okay and it's a it's a replica of an m1 did he tell you he carried that yeah yeah and i said well i kind of doubt you carried this but you know yeah. Maybe, you know, possibly the real version of it, and and then he's like, "Oh, that's not real." I'm like, "No, that's a BB gun." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, granted, they look they look good, but no, it's I mean, a BB the, gun. How much of that do you get? Now, that's a good question at the gun store. I mean, how much of that like stole almost like? I guess you got the guys that maybe went and wanted to be bigger and better than they were, so maybe they'll they'll talk it up a little bit. How much do you think you guys get the actual like stolen valor type stuff in there? Uh, you know what happens. It, it, no, it happens a lot. I, I don't know. Uh, there's really I shouldn't say a percentage. There's more of a yeah, just, maybe maybe four to five a month, maybe. Like when they come in, do they even look the part? No, I mean some of them are tatted out, which doesn't really mean anything. But, right, right. Um, you know, there's a couple couple of them just show up with sunglasses on, and why they wear sunglasses in the store is still beyond me. But they're wearing the pit vipers. They're wearing them. Yeah, them pitties. No, this is usually either that or the aviations or whatever, you know, <laughs> aviator. <laughs> they're a big Top Gun fan, right? No, I, I just... Uh, I mean, do they talk? So I was they, in the whatever. They talk, and I'll, I'll just let them do whatever they want to do. They'll just talk it up, and if they, it makes them feel better, whatever. It's it's funny because the, the, the guys that are really the veterans that went and did that, they don't come in and talk about it. No, but you know what? You can tell you can which tell. ones really are. I mean... Yeah. And I'm not saying I doubt these people. I just I doubt the legitimacy of what they actually did. Like, I, I, I don't know that they were... You know, PJs and Delta and all this other right, stuff. Right. I'm like, maybe a cook or a <laughs> custodial engineer. I, I don't know. potatoes and made cookies. I'm not sure. Which everyone, you know what? Everyone has to. There's have, a job for everyone. There's a job I mean, for everyone, thing. yeah. It, it's not just one person running the whole thing. But uh, no, it, it's. That's interesting. And I'm not going to. I don't want to be the guy that to try and delegitimize everything they, they're saying. I just. Uh, you can definitely tell the ones that are you know real uh yeah just yeah real hardcore so and what kind of what the ones that aren't the ones that are talking what kind of guns are they buying uh <laughs> you that, know that, that, not need, the kind that's I, that's I really what know. where you can yeah. pick them out i need to know what are they buying um the guys that really know what they're doing SCCY are yeah. gonna buy the, the yeah they're gonna buy the stuff they're they gonna know, buy the they ones. know the stuff and the other the other people are like oh yeah we had one of these back in you know in the army and i'm like that's a ruger uh that's a twenty two forty five. That's a that's a Mark IV. That's a twenty two. I don't think you had one of these in the <laughs> army, you know. And he's like, "Yeah, this is the uh, this is the safety right here." And they push the the you know mag release button, <laughs> and the mag goes flying across the counter. Oh um, man, that's funny. I, I mean, they kind of do it to themselves. I don't need to add right. any more to it. So. <laughs> I need to come in out there. That really it. happened, by the way. The push the mag release button and really, yeah. He's yeah. like, "This is the safety. This is the safety." He's showing his wife or girlfriend or whatever. This is the safety, and and then the mag just flew across the the counter, and fell on the floor, and I'm like, "Oh, jeez." You know? <laughs> nope, nope. That's that's not the safety. No, nope, that that would be the. And then yeah, it's funny because um, Tony was the one doing that, and yeah. <laughs> And he just looks at me, and I, I just kind of shook my head, and and then ever, you know, after that, all he would, the guy would say something, and Tony'd be like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> so did they buy a gun? No, no, they. I think they. Uh, I think after a few mistakes, they finally realized, okay, maybe we, maybe I, you know, the guy didn't want to make himself any worse right, than he already right. was. So he wanted to come in and buy that 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 top dollar SCCY. Yeah, I'm so glad we got rid of those. Oh, you guys don't sell those anymore? No, no, we told uh we told our buyer that 
Good. You know, if we're gonna carry the the G two, let's just do that because it's that, that is that is it's twice t- the gun that, that, that the SCCY that is, is ten times the gun <laughs> yeah. that the SCCY is. And I'm not saying it's great, but it's it's better. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's. Uh... I'm trying to think what I did this last week. I just been I've been taking a lot. I've taken it's kind of been kind of slow. So I've been taking a lot of uh, I've been taking a lot of uh, uh, time to um, kind of take some online like um, firearms marketing type classes. Oh, nice! Like, well, not, not to market firearms, but like firearm like instructor marketing right. type classes, like They've internet, been, like yeah. advertising stuff like that. Yeah, how to yeah. how to how to do that? How to how to do that stuff? So, oh, hey. I know that guy. I know that. That's family right there. He's got his whole family watching. Great. Nice. Do I look good? Comb my hair. Do I look? Am I ready for this? Y'all ready for this? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Are we getting that? But don't any, you have that on there? No. Yeah, yeah. I need it. <laughs> um, but uh, what what I'm what I'm learning is there's a whole group of instructors. I mean, there's probably like anywhere from like sixty to eighty instructors on these in these Zoom meetings, and it's kind of funny because. Um, they said that all the uh, like the fi- like eighty percent of firearms instructors and like you know, like gun ranges and stuff like that actually went out of business from the time COVID started to to now. That's and a lot. It is a lot, and I, I was talking to these guys online, and they're saying that you know a lot of them say during COVID it was either good or bad. You either like didn't have business or you had a ton. Yeah. Typically, a lot of guys had a ton, and then after COVID, it just fell off. It just fell off, and I don't know that it. Be honest with you, I don't know that ammo. People say, oh, it had to be the hard to get ammo. That was what was doing. I don't think so. I was busier when the ammo was way more expensive and a lot less, you know, I could see that potentially accessible. being a part of it, but. Uh, I think yeah. people are just getting out and doing stuff right now. Well, true. And that's where, that's where I think that it's at, honestly. Now, especially now that, you know, the, uh, the, all the vaccinated people out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it, if it's just everything's opening back up, yeah. so they're getting out. So anyhow, well, what's your you 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 brought up? There's a new 380 that came out on the market, or is it out? Or is that it's, just, it just debuted? The first time I saw it was today. Do you guys have it? I doubt it. Okay, um, what is it? What is this 380? It's the uh, it's called the so Ruger came out with their Max Nine, um, which was the answer to you know, Ruger's version of the we talked about this last podcast. Uh, yeah. 365, the Hellcat, all those different ones. Um, so Ruger has the Max 9. Now they've got the Max LC, LCP Max or Max LCP, right. which is a 380, 10-round uh, capacity. So is that the one where the magazine's shaped funny and it comes, it's like a single yeah, stack? Yeah, so it goes top? from a double and then it tapers into a single. Um, that way they don't have to change the, the slide or anything like that, even though the mm-hmm. Max 9 was a total new, um, new design for them, but... Um, so now they're doing this LCP version in a 380. 380. So you think that's going to take off as well? I mean, I well, mean, I think it, it. I think it has potential because the the easy, the Smith and Wesson easy was a really big hit in a 380. Right. Um, but that's. I mean, that's kind of a that's a specialty s- gun. specialty a design, gun. a niche gun. Yeah. And this one's just going to be. It's a niche gun, but it's it's just following suit with what everything else is going to now. So how big is this 380? I haven't seen it yet, so I'm because, not entirely sure. It's, it's they call it a micro compact, which we went over last. I, that's that's bull crap. Last week. So anytime, even a 380 in a micro compact, if it's not a niche gun like the Easy, it can kick like a freaking mule. Yeah, it's. I bet it's a little bit bigger because it's ten rounds, and the LCP it was only six, so it's it's a pretty tiny. And it's little got gun. that thicker grip though. Probably has a thicker grip. I'm sure. Mm, so I'm interested to get my hands on one and check it out. So if you hear any reviews or anyone coming in from the store. Let me know. We'll okay. talk. We'll talk about yeah, it next as soon as episode. I get one, I'll let you know, and then, right? Okay, um, cool. We'll check it out. So, so hey, we got a question from Kylan. He said, he said, I'm gonna read it here. He said, had a question about registrations of firearms today from Jack. He asked, I bought my first two firearms. Are they registered already? If not, where do you register? Um, and there, he's in North Carolina. I don't believe North Carolina actually has a state registry. As far as a national registry, t- tell them how the paperwork trail, how, how it's supposed to work. So pretty much the the form you fill out is the ATF 4473 form. Right. Um, and that's for any firearms purchases. Uh, and that's a national thing. Everybody has to fill out that form. Some states, uh, for instance, Oregon, you have to... Uh, run through the Oregon State Police mm-hmm. um, as well as the next background check. But um, but you can smoke heroin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
So as far as the Knicks background check goes, when they run your background check, all they know is that you bought a long gun or a handgun. Right. Okay. Um, I, certain states, I'm sure, are, will turn in all of the stuff and tell them exactly what you bought. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some states that do have a registry. I know Idaho doesn't. Um, I don't know that North Carolina does. You keep chatting. I'm going to um, find out. Oh, so if you bought it in Idaho, then there is no Idaho registry. Oh, yeah. There's no Idaho registration. No. Yeah. Um, but, so what's going to happen is the, the place you bought it from is going to have to keep that paperwork in, in, you know, file it away, not the garbage file it away. Yeah, yeah. But they have to keep it for 20 years, um, required to. Um, but they don't have to, you know, that information won't go out to anybody except if the ATF comes and does an audit or something. That's the only yeah. place, only people that are going to see it other than the... The right. store that he bought. So it there's from, not so. a there's not a, um, uh, a required. Uh, Idaho doesn't require that you register your firearms right. at all. Right. So and as far as federal, as of right now, there is no federal. They say there's no mm-hmm. federal, but yeah, as of right now, <laughs> they say, they say it is. But you know what? Here's and I'm always got to throw this in there because you know I don't trust the government. But um, so when you go to where you work and we fill those things out. It's online. When you hit send, where does that go? So it's not. It it, could that's go, the it, funny thing. It could go to two different places. That's the funny thing is it's not technically online. It's just you're filling out the form. Okay. On a tablet. Um, as soon as we get that information, that just goes to the um, your file. Doc, the document to, so we can print it out because we have to keep a printed I trust, copy. I trust you, but I don't trust the federal government. Right. I can I can be thinking. Sometimes not even mentioned. I swear. Sometimes I'm thinking I'm going to go out and buy a red tractor. The next day on my phone, yeah. I get Google ads for right. red, red tractors. tractors. Yeah. So you, I don't know, man. <laughs> They're supposed to not be a registry, so he's right. he's okay. If you bought them in Idaho, you're not required to register them anywhere. Mm-hmm. Go um, buy some ammo, take some classes, and enjoy them. So now, what what happens in in a case that let's say that gun is found at a crime scene or used in a crime. Right. They'll take the serial number off of that gun. Uh Uh-huh. They will contact the manufacturer. Manufacturer says, okay, we we made this gun this date. We sent it to, let's say, Big Rock as a distributor. Right. Um, And Big Rock, they they contact Big Rock. They have the the, uh, serial number on file. says, we sent it to DMB Supply. And then they contact us, and we say, okay, we sold it to this person. So there is a trace that you can do, but it's kind of a long deal. But that's only in a case where, like, law enforcement needs to know where this gun came from, who it belongs to. As far as a registry, they're not going to be able to, like, look at that gun and say, well, this gun was used in this crime. We're going to punch in the serial number and have it. Yeah, it's not going to instantly pop up. Actually, actually, if you've reported it stolen. True, it would pop up. If you've reported it stolen, it will pop up. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. The ins and outs of that. And that's, we, that's definitely the thing you want to do is if it is yes. stolen, you want to report it as if stolen. If it is stolen, I always encourage everyone. And I am you know, I don't always do as I say. And so I need to be better at this myself. If you've got a bunch of firearms, rifles, shotguns, handguns, whatever it might be, um, you know, write those serial numbers down. Write the serial down, number down, the make, the model, if you added anything to it. Mm-hmm. Right. This is really good for insurance purposes. Now, you need to – I would keep a set one set at your house, that list. I keep that another list somewhere else because if your house burns down or your gun gets stolen, right – See your gun get stolen, and you want to tell, hey, tell the law enforcement officer, you know, call them and say, my gun's been stolen. I need to report this HK is stolen. And it's a VP9. And they're going to say, well, it's a serial number. If you don't have a serial number to give them, they can't put it in tough as a luck. tough <laughs> luck. I mean, they can't put it in as a stolen firearm. Yeah. And there's a very good, there's a good chance that if it's ever used in a crime and they, and they do find it, um, and you do have the serial number and they've entered it as a stolen gun, you could possibly get your firearm back. Yeah. And at the same time, if you if you go to sell your gun, like in Idaho, you can sell to a, another person. Um, right. I don't usually, unless I know the person really well, and right. I know they're not a felon or something, I don't just sell it to anybody. Right. Um, but in the case that you do that, you do want to make a paper trail of it. You want to make a bill of sale. You want the serial number. You want the date. You want both parties involved. All yeah. the information you can get. That way, if the gun is ever used in a crime, you can show them, hey, I, yes, I did buy the gun at at such and such store but then i turned around and sold it to 
this person and I have paperwork yeah. right here saying this is when it was sold and everything. And so. here's the thing. If you, you don't have to do that, but if you do want to do that and um, you go to do that to the person who's buying the gun and they seem like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to sign this or I don't know if I want to do that. Then that should be a red flag. Red flag. Don't sell Maybe the gun. Maybe they shouldn't have a firearm. Doesn't right? matter if you're strapped for cash. Don't sell the gun. Don't sell Not the gun. It. You can go to a pawn shop and sell the gun. Right. If you're strapped for cash, they'll buy it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, Okay. So that's a good question. Though. That was a good question. I hope that answered your question, Kylan. Uh, kind of the ins and outs of that and everything in between is what it felt like to me. Yeah. So, hey, did you see my holster modification? You're, no. Which, what, cut, wait, which one? My, my $200 holster. I cut it to f- fit my red. No, dot. you did not. I did with the Dremel tool. With the the wedge one? Yeah. Is this the, oh, my gosh. No, I didn't see that. Yeah. I customized that, baby. Wow. You customized a custom. Dude, I bought. I bought. I, I cut like. I cut like one hundred and fifty dollars off that two hundred dollar holster. <laughs> wow! I just trimmed it a little bit. Well, does it does it work better? Oh, it works freaking great. Okay, well there you go. That was worth it. Works absolutely great, man. And I, I think I posted a picture on Instagram and I actually tagged um, Keepers Concealment in it. <laughs> oh, I was like, check it out! I cut your holster all up, man. They, they were don't. probably thrilled about that. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm sure they were. I'm sure they were. Um, anything else? Anything else that comes up at the gun store? New guns, new anything? We've, we've got a... You're not going to like hearing this, but we got a Mini 14 in the other day, which okay. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I don't know that I dislike hearing that. Okay. <laughs> you're not really I'm a rifle not guy. A so. ri- I'm just not a rifle guy, but hey, yeah, that's cool. It was pretty... Uh, it was pretty Did it sell already? No... Well, it might have today. I don't know. I wasn't there, but but no, it's uh, it was a pretty gun. I mean, it's the stainless. I have the the black synthetic stock. It's, yeah, it's a nice looking gun. I mean, I wouldn't mind having it, but I'm not spending over a thousand bucks for it. No, ouch, ouch. Used to be able to get them at Walmart for five hundred. So, yeah, yeah. So I want to jump in here with a little piece of training advice, and I know I did this training advice probably like three episodes ago, but it's just so important. I see the the people I've had coming through classes. I'm going to tell you right now. I've set up said it before and i know you can back me up on this how you press the trigger on your firearm learning to press that trigger on your firearm is probably 85 percent of of shooting the gun accurately yeah dry fire people dry fire get to know your trigger do not slap that trigger doorknobs light switches and like the top part of the ceiling where the walls come together yeah it's a great spot to aim Yep. Aim your gun, dry fire, learn the trigger. So when you are pressing on pressing your trigger of your firearm, there's going to be typically, if it's a striker fire gun, there's going to be three parts of the trigger. You're going to have your slack or your, what we call your slack or your take up. You're going to have your wall. That's where it stops. Once you get to the wall, you press through the wall um, until the trigger breaks and that's where it fires. And mm-hmm. you don't have to like, you know, ramrod that thing back. You don't want your trigger slamming into the back of your gun, right. the back of your trigger guard. That's not the it's way it works. more of a squeeze than a pull. Yeah, and so I tell everyone, you know, press. When you say press, is with two S's. Uh, when you're when you're referring to the trigger and you press the trigger, it's seven S's. You know, you don't want to press the trigger. You want to press exactly the trigger. And people, they look at me like, well, that's really slow. That's that's I'm, that's making me really slow. Like, well, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yep, you are going to develop uh, the the neural pathways, that muscle memory, and you've got to learn how to press that trigger correctly because mm-hmm. that is a hundred percent of how you shoot, and it's it determines on you know how accurate you shoot. That that that's all there is to it. There's there's a woman that's taking this class, taking a couple classes from me, and she makes it. Uh, point to go out. I think we talked about it last week. She goes out into the into the range and shoots once a week. Once a week, she go shoot like fifty to hundred rounds. That's good. I mean, once a week, and you can't get that dedication out of anybody. She start and, and and she's great, man. Chris is her name's Chris. She'll she'll be listening to this. Chris is absolutely fantastic at this. And when she first started shooting, she hadn't shot a gun. I don't either. It was either a really long time ago or never. I can't quite remember what she told me. And um, she. Uh, she took her first shot, and it surprised the holy living life out of her, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, she jumped and swung the gun down, and I'm not picking on Chris. I'm just saying now it's night and day difference. Yeah. Night and day different. She is. She goes home. She dry fires. She goes out, and she shoots at the range, and she sends me pictures of her targets. And she is like, I can't even remember the old Chris. 
when it yeah. came to firearms. She's that's how much improved she is. Now she always still has something to work on, and everyone's got something to work on. But man, she's she she comes to class now. She's in this women's class that I teach. She comes in this class with like just confidence, right? Just oozing confidence not like she's showing off just confidence like i can do this i know how to do this that I, makes you so much i've been practicing so much better at shooting though when you have the confidence to do it oh my gosh and you know that you know and people always ask me well they always well how can i fix this how can i and i know people look at me like i'm a broken record i'm like you're jerking the trigger yeah and i can prove it watch you know and then i'll give them a gun that i'll tell them it's loaded and then they it's not and they click and they jerk yeah, that gun I'm, well, I'm guilty of it and they're I like mean, they're like well and i, am, I think everybody is at, one, is at some point yeah and um they'll look at me like well what was that and i'm like you jerked the trigger you're jerking the trigger slow mm -hmm. it well i am slow and not slow enough right you've really got to work with it you've got to work through it and I, people just look at me like that's all you ever tell me is i got the trigger press i'm like because that's 85 percent. you know of something i found that really helps me out is like when i go to shoot i'll spend at least five minutes prior to right. shooting dry firing yes just to mm -hmm. get that trigger pull you know and, and I, you want the gun to surprise you yeah you know but yeah i try to avoid jerking the trigger yeah. and that's how i do it as i just practice prior to it yep and you've seen me and i tell everyone that if i'm out shooting with my buddies for fun right and they, they say hey i got this new gun you should try and shoot it what's the first thing i do freaking dry fire yeah. that thing because i tell my dry fire because i don't want to look you like want to know moron. the trigger i don't want to look like a moron yeah. i want to shoot this thing the best i can shoot yeah. right and that's the only way to learn that trigger so let me ask you this this is going to be the uh the zen or the yoga Ooh. the zen or the yoga side of shooting is what I'm say. <laughs> yes, exactly so and i know how it is for me right and i just i was one i'm going to ask how it is for you when i shoot you know and i know kind of the trigger press and everything like that for me when i shoot everything just feels right i know i'm doing everything correctly and i kind of just like almost clear my mind right you could yeah. be standing there talking to me and i'm typically not even going to hear it or pay attention to it mm -hmm. i'm focused on what i'm doing and it's like it's almost like and this is just standing there shooting a target it's almost like time kind of stands still does that make sense yeah i mean and and i can feel everything i can feel on my my right handed so i feel everything with my finger my hand i can feel what i'm doing with the firearm absolutely everything and i just kind of it's just like time stands still when I fire the gun. Is that is I mean is that is that just me? Am I just crazy? Or I think is everybody's got a different way because I you know when I step up to the line, I'm locked and loaded, ready to go. Um, you know I'll t I'll bring the gun up, I'll have my finger off the trigger, I go through the fundamentals in my head. Right. I step by step, you know, work into it, and then once I start shooting then I don't go through the whole batch of them all at once or, you know, from the beginning, sure, sure. I, I go, you know, I'll go from the beginning on the first shot all the way into like, when I actually fire. And then the next rounds after that is more like the last, you know, couple well, steps. Well, everything smooth, everything yeah. smooths out in your brain. Right. But if you were having troubles, you're going to immediately stop it and you're going to back yeah. it up and you're going to start going through them in your, mm -hmm. and I focus, I try and focus on what I'm doing, not just the target. Right. You know, I focus on the sights. I focus on the, the gun itself. Um, you know, there's probably 95% of the time when I'm done with the magazine, I I mean, I know it instantly because I'm, I'm, I've got that gun in my sight. Right. You can see the, you can slide. see the slides locked back. Right. A lot of the times, and you know this from classes, people shoot, shoot, shoot. They don't realize how many rounds they've shot. Their slides locked back. And they're still trying to pull that trigger. Right. So I pay attention to that stuff as much as I can. Yep. And even so. when I'm not standing there just shooting bullseyes and I'm you know, shooting quick, right? Maybe yeah. I'm drawing that firearm. And it's the same way with drawing, right? You do it enough, you can feel it out. I mean, for me, it's just like I'm doing it quick, but it's almost like in slow motion in right. my brain, right? And even though I'm drawing and shooting fast and maybe double tapping or whatever, I mean, I'm just... I can feel absolutely everything. Yeah, I can feel everything. I can feel the trigger reset. I can feel it's it's just it's like I'm so hyper focused. Yeah, that I I don't know. It's it's hard to explain to someone. Right. I mean, it really is. That well, what do you do? And you say, man, my my mind is, but you know, clear. But when you have a new shooter in, there's so much nerves and there's so much stuff going on. The nerves in their will brain. get you, especially if somebody's watching you. Yeah, it's it's a little different. Um, the thing of it is, is like when you when you start shooting and you you you'll know instantly when you start doing bad you yeah. can't you can't focus on that you're doing bad no because you're going to start doing worse yes and you just have to stop you just have to stop for a little bit 
put the gun down, you know, walk around a little bit, take a breath. Yeah. And then, and then go pick the gun back up, eliminate all the bad stuff that you just did. People start to, they, 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 they get to a point where if they mess up, they start trying too hard. Yeah. And that's going to lead to like, you're doing this with the gun, you're jerking that right. trigger. I'm not, you're not remembering the yeah. fundamentals. You're not remembering the steps. Because you're, it's you're almost overdoing. like you're physically trying to remove that bolt from yeah. that gun and throw it at the target. Exactly. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, I've been there. I'm not picking on anybody. I've I've done it myself. Oh yeah, we and all. I, have. You just have to, you just have to walk away from it for a little bit. Just step away for just a, a minute or two. Even. And, I mean, it happens for everyone, right? Yeah. I mean, and everyone's no one's going to be perfect all the time. And some people are just like they they get so upset if they miss one oh, of yeah. shot. And I, I I'm if you want to go back and you want to make up for it and end on a good note i totally get that i totally understand that but some people especially when they're new they get so frustrated you know where i really found that advice to come in handy huh i told you last week i just bought a bow yes the archery is is literally like you can get frustrated really quick it's like the fly fishing of of shooting projectiles almost it's and i i literally have to tell myself to step away from it because I'm trying to do better and I just, I keep not doing better. So I'm well, like, okay, okay. I need to back off with a know? bow. I'm going to, it's kind of like shooting, right? I mean, so in a bow, if, if you get tense and you're not doing it right, you're going to, you're going to over grip yeah. that bow. You can over grip a handgun as well, yeah. right? You can over grip that trigger. You can over grip your release on your bow. You can do all kinds of stuff. And it's, it, it kind of, I, I don't want to put the two together, but there um, are certain muscles that you that yeah. you use that you don't realize you're using oh, yeah. your shoulders especially in in shooting a handgun you don't realize how much your shoulders come into play yeah you know and when new shooters come in and they're like nervous anyhow they get tense in their shoulders and their neck and i always tell everyone i was like you're pretty new or you haven't shot that much even shooting 50 rounds is going to be like it's going to be like if someone handed you something heavy and had you hold it out in front of you how long is it going to be before you start to do this yeah right not very long for most people right so you're going out there. You're, I'm not trying to put bad thoughts in their head, but I'm just explaining to them. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be tense. And then I'm watching you, right? Yeah. And uh, you're going to have to remember all the stuff. And you go to shoot. You're going to, and literally after 10 rounds, I see him over there doing this. Oh, my shoulders. <laughs> and I usually about that time, I say, let's take a quick break. If it's just private, I can't do that in a permanent right. class, but in a private class, let's take a quick break, relax a little bit. Because right. it, I mean, it does. It'll, it'll, It'll take his toll on well, you. Well, it's a violent act. I mean, if you think about it, the the gun, you know, the action moving, everything is very violent. Oh, yeah. And it it does add an element of stress to you, and you don't realize you're, you're doing that until, you know, somebody might point it out to you or tell you to relax a little bit. Right. You don't even know you're doing that stuff. Right. So, so it's kind of like... Um, this new style of shooting and stuff that I'm doing, uh, that I'm teaching, you know, you actually have to relax and you have to learn how to accept the recoil. It's just like a kid, right? If when you when you have a kid, you, you've got a couple kids, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the be- one of the my kids threw temper tantrum, some of my girls, right? And you had to like pick them up and like we get, we're going or whatever. You know what they would do? They would just go totally limp. Yeah. And you couldn't hardly move them, right? Right. <laughs> but if if they stiffen up, you could, you know, you lift, oh, yeah. lift them up and move them. Yeah. And it's just like when you're shooting a gun, you relax, relax, right. because if you stiffen, you're nervous. That recoil is going to push you around like a freaking, you know, you're getting boxed by a kangaroo. Yeah. I mean, really, you have to learn. You, you'll to you'll be physically it. tired. You will you know, be even after 100 rounds. You'll just be right. drained. Yeah. So, so what do we got here? We got a question from Kylan. I'll let you start. Well, I'll read it. You can start with it. So, do you all recommend a tactical reload or forced reloads when in a self defense situation? Um. Well, I just I practice reloading. I've never right. been in a self defense situation, so gotcha. I don't. I mean, I, I don't know that I'm really qualified to. I don't want to dance around the question. But <laughs> I've never actually been in that situation. Um, but I just I practice my re, my reloads. Um. You know where I keep my magazine, the way I have my magazine inserted. And my finger goes right to the tip of the bullet. Basically, I bring it up, and it's it's like you're pointing right to where you're going. And you're, you got to be in your workspace. Yeah, everything happens in your workspace where you can see everything. Um, 
So here's the thing. So, uh, you know, tactical reloads versus force reloads. So force reloads being that when you are forced to reload because you are out of ammo. Tactical, you, yeah. t- tactical reloads being, uh, you know, you're in a gunfight situation, right? And maybe you've taken cover and you got a second and you go ahead and reload and you don't drop your mag, right? You shove it back in your pocket or whatever because you may not have an empty magazine, but right. you've shot half of them out. You might as well stick a fresh one in if you've got a second, right? Mm-hmm. It just kind of depends on the situation. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Most, you know, most self-defense situations, we, we train. We train for the yeah. worst, right? You train to reload. You train to do all that stuff. And, and I've done, you know, tactical reloads and whatnot. But in all honesty, and I'm not trying to downplay any of this because you always prepare for the worst and hope for the best. A self-defense situation, I mean, you're probably lucky if you empty a whole magazine, to be honest. Well, and it's very easy to... Um it's very easy to lose count. I mean, you're not, uh, I mean, even out here on the class day, some people will count how many rounds they've shot. Some people is, they're just oblivious to it. Yeah. They have no idea. And in a self-defense situation, like, I mean, I've seen law enforcement on videos, mm-hmm. law enforcement officers in videos, right? They're, they're shooting and they don't realize they've just emptied a magazine and they're still, they're smashing that trigger. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, they just, you just don't know. So sure. Uh, you practice, you know, you practice for the force reloads because that might happen. You might fire, depending on the gun, let's say you have eight rounds, you might fire eight rounds instead of the two you think you shot and you have to force reload, right? Yeah. But I don't, I think you need to know how to do both. There's there's training drills out there. Um, there's a deck of cards that, that this company makes. It's called RE Factor. They make a deck of cards that tells you, you know, fire three rounds, yes. reload, blah 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 and they, they do different it's just totally every card is different scenario mm-hmm. um that's something really good to do just you know because you're not you're not in a stressful situation but you're able to do it if you practice it enough mm-hmm. you can do it either way so right yeah. so i don't we i don't want to dance around the question kyle but that that's our answer yeah <laughs> I mean, it's hard. I mean, I think you need to know how to. You need to know how to do both. Yeah, definitely. And the situation is just going to dictate. It's really hard to tell you what you are going to do and what you're going to have to do into a situation like that because it's going to be so dynamic, yeah, right? I mean, it's going to sure. be so dynamic. There's a lot going on. Um, so it's just kind of it's going to flow. Know how to do both. Exactly. Yeah. Know how to do both. Just like you should know how to shoot right-handed and left-handed. That's true. Yeah. So and it's all situational based, I think. So yep. we got another question here. It says, is there an update on the class where someone shot himself? So, uh, you know, as far as I know, I, it's, it's kind of been pretty quiet. I haven't really heard anything. Um, the person had shot themselves in the, in their hand. I don't know if it affected those instructors negatively or not. Um, the, I, the person I don't think was deceased by any means from what I hear that person is doing fine. That's, that's all I got for an update on that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I mean, honestly, I know the, it, I know kept, the, it was kept pretty quiet. I know what happened. I know the company um, that did it or that was, you know, that was doing the class. Um, but I, otherwise, it's been really quiet. Yeah, so. and I'll be honest with you, too. I know the company, but, you know, I don't want to come out and just – if something ever happened like that in my class, I don't want someone to come out and, and – yeah, I don't want a bad mouth, right? As much as maybe I, I, I don't get along with all the instructors in this valley, I don't want to be that guy. So we're just going to kind of leave it at that, if that makes any sense. I just use that whole situation and why I talked about it before. I just use that whole situation as um, a learning a learning situation. I'm going to learn from, we're going to learn from mistakes that happen. We're going to redo our safety, put some more mm-hmm. safety protocol uh, in place, and that kind of stuff, right? That's yeah. That's kind of the way kind of the way that i wanted to approach that so okay anything else sir well there's that really tragic event oh yes we should talk about and I, then you uh, talk and i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up okay. so i can and read then, the uh, article then we've got the um the the wally walk that we need to talk about so oh, um, yes yes <laughs> we'll talk about the wally walk so uh th- this tragic situation we're talking about happened down in, in uh a, a uh, Arvada, Arvada, Nevada, Arvada. 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 Or something, Colorado. Yeah, Arvada, Colorado. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and just read this article. Sure, yeah. And then we can just go go through and talk about it. <clears throat> okay. It says, uh, John Hurley was hailed by police as a hero for shooting and killing, <clears throat> excuse me, a gunman they say had killed one officer and expressed hatred for police in a Denver suburb. Uh, but when another officer rushed in to respond and saw Hurley holding the suspect's AR-15, he sh- shot Hurley, killing him, police revealed Friday. This, this disclosure helped clarify what happened on Monday when three people 
Hurley. Uh, Hurley, our vetted police officer, Gordon Beasley, and the suspect, uh, suspected gunman, Ronald Troy, died in a string of shootings in the historic a downtown district of Arvada, an area with popular shops, restaurants, yada, yada, yada. So according to the timeline and video released by the police, Troik, who was 59 years old, ambushed Beasley, the law enforcement officer, after he pulled his truck into a parking spot near Beasley's patrol car. As Beasley, as Beasley uh, was responding to a report of a suspicious person, the video shows Troik running toward Beasley down an alley. When Beasley turns around, Troik raises his gun and fires at him as two people stand nearby. Beasley falls to the ground in the video. According to the video, apparently from a surveillance camera uh, and a police narration of it, Troik grabs an AR-15 rifle from his truck and is carrying it when Hurley confronts him and shoots him with a handgun. When another officer arrives, Hurley is holding Troik's AR-15 and the officer open fire. Hurley's shooting of Troik and the officer's shooting of Hurley are not shown in the video. So, there was a gentleman a, a dead set on harming officers. They said that he had, if you read further in the article, which I will not bore you with my recitation of that <laughs> article. Um, uh, this guy's brother called law enforcement and said, hey, look, my brother is something. He's going to do something. He's on edge. He's calling out law enforcement, whatever it is. Anyhow, this guy ambushed this, this law enforcement officer and shot him, right? Mm -hmm. He walked back to his truck, reached in his truck to get out an AR-15, and went to sh shot some other windows and stuff? Shot some windows, they said, of, of, of some patrol cars, which I don't I, I don't know that there was other patrol cars right. in the area. I think it was just the one, but and, at the time, anyway. And this gentleman was in the area. He heard the gunshots, from what I've read, and he ran toward the gunshots, and he came up on this bad guy that just shot this law enforcement officer, and he shot him and killed him. Mm -hmm. With his handgun, yep. Shot him and killed him with his handgun. Good, right? He saved the day. Then all we know is law enforcement, uh, another law enforcement officer showed up, come screaming up there in his car. He got out of his car. He saw who, to him, looked like the suspect, right, because he had an AR-15, holding the AR-15, and then um, uh, the law enforcement drew down and shot him, right? And or immediately shot him. Yeah. From what we know, is that is that fair to say? That's how well, it happened. I, I, from what I know, yes. There's they ha they're still doing an investigation, so there's still some stuff they haven't released yet. So right. So my my question on this. So here we have, and we've talked about it before. We have a concealed carry holder. He he has his firearm, and 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 you can, everyone can dis decide on their own, right? I'm just going to lay this all out. Everything I everything i see here so you can decide on your own if you hear gunshots and you want to run toward gunshots go for it that's your thing that's your deal right i whatever so he ran toward the gunshots now if you go there and you engage you need to understand that you obviously you're going to engage someone with a firearm you're putting yourself at risk i think we all understand how that works mm -hmm. okay if you are there and you use your firearm you are also putting yourself in risk of being shot by someone else. Maybe someone else, another concealed carry holder is going to run up and see you not know the full story and right. they're going to shoot you as well. Yeah. I mean, you have no idea. Maybe law enforcement is as well, right? This is a risk. We all need to know the risk. My <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> great. I'm sorry. Reading the comments. Um, my question is, why did he pick up the AR 15? Why did he shoot the guy with his handgun and pick up the rifle? I don't think he was going to do anything bad with the rifle, but I don't know that that was a great move on his part. Mm -hmm. Kick it out of the way, right? Yeah, and unfortunately, we don't know the whole thing, uh, so it's it's all speculation. But um, as soon as you pick up the gun, you know, it puts a I don't want to say it puts a target on you, but it, it puts the spotlight on you, right? Because uh, obviously, there's going to be people responding to gun, you know, to gunshots. So. Um, you know there's people coming uh if he was gonna pick up the gun i would have you know i, I don't know it's hard to say because i don't i wasn't there but pick right. up the gun throw it away or get it out of there you know you know what I, I don't but he, don't don't hold it i've also had some people say hey look as soon as you're you, you shoot, shoot someone reholster your gun put it away i don't agree with that either right keep your firearm out i don't think you should pick up the other guy's gun by any means Kick it out of the way, get it out of the way. Do you need to keep your gun out if you shoot someone? I think I would because you don't know if the guy's actually down or not, yeah. correct? Right. Would he have been better off to just stand there with his firearm out pointing at the guy on the ground? Possibly. Because um, he's laying there next to his AR-15. If he moves, he's got the upper hand. He's pointing the gun at him, right? Why, why would you want to get closer 
to the guy that was sure. shooting people. That's my thoughts on it, right? Now, when do you reholster your gun? You know what? Law enforcement shows up, you put your gun down. Sure, yeah. You do what they tell you. Maybe even if they don't tell you, you know what you do? You drop your gun. Don't set your gun and you drop your gun, hands up. They don't know who you are. They don't know if you're the the the, yeah. the victim, the good guy, the bad guy. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so you let them figure that all out when they when they but, show up. But as you're unarmed. <laughs> as you're un, as you're unarmed, yeah. right? Now we don't know exactly, you know, they're not going to release that part to us yet. Um so there was a case oh, I was years ago, but it was in Walmart, right? There was, uh, there was a boyfriend girlfriend that were yep. in Walmart. They were separated. They each had a cart. They were pushing around. The guy started shooting people in Walmart. I think this was down in Vegas. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, he started shooting people in Walmart, and there was a gentleman in there who was a concealed carry holder, had his gun. He had a shot. He drew his firearm to shoot at the guy that was doing the shooting. He didn't realize he had his girlfriend or wife or whoever was there. She came up behind the guy and shot the concealed carry holder, right? You don't know who's watching you. You don't know. You put yourself into harm's way when you do this, and that's fine. You just need to understand the risk. Now, as far as what happened when the law enforcement officer showed up, right? I'm not trying to take a dig at law enforcement, but what did he say? This is, I guess, this is what the court case is over now, right? Well, yeah, they're still, like I said, they're doing an investigation, so we really don't know if he said anything right. or if, if uh, you know, he just jumped to conclusions and shot the guy. I, I, I don't know. It's, right. it's really unfortunate that this happened. Uh, I mean, obviously the the Hurley, I think his name was that, yes. that shot the the suspect. Uh, he is a hero. He stopped. He probably potentially it could have been a lot worse. So right. Um, but it is just a tragic thing that happened. I mean, and I'm just curious. A part of me is always curious. Like, yeah. What? And I, I know this sounds like I'm digging. But I just always want the full story. Right? right. What did the law enforcement officer say to him? Did he say anything, or did that law enforcement officer just roll up and shoot him? Sure. I mean, that that's going to. Which add a lot I don't of... know that I blame him, but if I were to roll up and shoot the wrong person, I'd be in trouble. It, it's going to add a lot of context to this to this <laughs> You're grinning. thing for sure. Because I'm trying to like I'm walking a fine line here. Do you right. Know yeah, and, and that's the unfortunate thing right now is none of us know. Right. Um, I'm sure there's a video, maybe even a, uh, um, you know, the officer's camera. I don't know. There might be. Right. I, we don't know. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really curious to see how this plays out. But just, just know, you know, we don't know exactly what happened, but just know that, especially if you're in a situation like that where you use your firearm, and law enforcement's not there yet, I would keep my firearm out. I would keep it, you know, the suspect pinned down. Even if you shot him, keep. Keep the thing ready. Keep it ready to go if you need it again, right? Because they pop back up before. Yeah. And then when law enforcement comes in, you're done. You drop your gun, hands up, lay on the ground, whatever. They're going to treat you like you're a criminal because they don't know. Sure. Because they don't know. Yeah. They, they're, they're responding to a situation and they don't have all the information. Just Yeah. And they'll figure it out. I'm sure, sure they'll, yeah. they'll, get, they'll get it figured out. So that's probably I, that's probably all I want to say on that, I think, until we get more. Well, there's really not much more we know. So. Yeah, because my big question is what happened when the law enforcement officer yeah. showed up. I, that, that's what I want I to I think know. that's really the big question in everybody's mind. So Right. Uh, so what is the other thing we're going to talk about? The, you, the Wally Walk. Oh, the Wally Walk. So, yeah, which yeah, I've never heard of. I, I, so anyone – we got, we got three people viewing this right now. I don't <laughs> – so does anyone know and i'll explain what it is has anyone ever heard of the wally walk that's where you start out in grocery and you work your way through the dvds and electronics and it... funny you say that <laughs> funny you funny you say that because actually you're gonna lie you don't even know this part of it years ago when i first started to carry a firearm I mean, this is this was back when like online forums were like huge right that was facebook was still uh i don't even know if it's around or it had just it was MySpace was still going. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, MySpace was still the thing, right? Um, so you got all the information off of like online forums, depending on if you were interested in something. And one of the big things in the gun world, on all some of the big, I mean, some of the big, like uh, I can't even remember, like concealed carry forum, like um, I can't even think of the name of this huge national concealed carry online forum. And, you know, the big thing was is you get your gun, you get your permit. And when you get your permit in the mail, the first thing you need to do is go for a Wally walk. And that's essentially you're going to conceal your firearm legally because you have your permit. And you're going to go to Walmart and you're going to take a walk around the Walmart. And uh, it turned into a big deal. And you would do that because you were trying to. Walmart was a good place to go. Lots of people typically 
not everyone's paying attention to you and you can kind of when you first start to carry a gun how do you normally feel how did you feel when you first started to carry a firearm uh, honestly well it, i mean it varies if you, you, you okay i'm not gonna lie it, it, feels it gives you a little bit of sense of uh invulnerability like you're, you're you know you just like you you're just i don't know right. it's almost a high right but I felt like everyone was looking at you but too. you do feel like people are looking at you you keep tugging at your at your shirt at your shirt i and caught like, myself resting my arm on my gun you know making sure that oh, is oh yeah it's covered okay you know yeah yeah uh, so you and those are telltale signs if somebody's brand new to it is they just keep pulling on their shirt and um i pull on my shirt all the time it's like a nervous tick for me but, <laughs> but uh it's because you didn't do your wally walk yeah apparently <laughs> but so so that's what it is right it's to get the ner- the new shooter the or the new carrier yeah it's kids so carried to kind of work the nerves off right you had yeah. to go walk through walmart that was a big thing and people would post like i, I walked i did my wally walk today mm-hmm. and i was for a while, people thought that was like actual required thing that you wow. had to do. In fact, someone got really clever, and they they realized that all, most all WalMarts are the same layout. Yeah, and they posted up the floor plan, and they actually had a route you had to take. Oh, geez. <laughs> so it was. I mean that would that was that was a that was a big thing. I know it sounds silly, but I I, I can't. I read this article that talked about the Wally Walk, right? And yeah. it talked about the nervous things that people do when right. they carry a firearm and. I'll be 100 percent honest with you. You know, you don't want to print. So, people might say, "What's printing? Printing is when you're carrying a gun concealed, especially on your waist, and your shirt or coat or whatever your clothing presses against it, and you can see that there's a gun there, right?" Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, most people don't even notice. They don't even pay attention. They don't to pay it. attention. They don't notice. I mean, if they want to check out my butt, that's great. But that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to worry about that a lot, you know, and you know, anymore. Like I went to the I went to the Fourth of July uh, uh, Day parade here. We had at a local hometown, and I never wear shorts unless I'm running. I wore a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, and I was appendix carrying and you could tell you could tell i was carrying it wasn't a big deal though no one else no one else noticed i mean it was mostly in my brain do you know what i'm saying yeah i mean i still do look in the mirror and go i wonder if they can tell but and you're like hey look at that look at that is that a firearm are you just happy? <laughs> never mind but uh i just so that's the wally walk that so was- lately like what i've been noticing in 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 my store is that uh, we get a lot of the um the, the, I don't know why they insist on pulling their shirt up over their gun and showing off their gun. Right. And it's just on the one side and they, you know, tuck it under behind their gun. And I'm like, they feel like, why do they do that? I don't know. I swear. I, and I'm like, yeah. What are you going to practice your draw here? I'm like, or you what guys are, are uh, you know, will they do this that? Is a concealed the- carry state. Just do it. Well, they do it at the gun. They'll, they'll do that. Oh, they like, do it at the gun counter. Like for sure, they if they didn't walk in the store like that, they'll for sure do it in the store. Are so they trying to show off when or? they walk by the gun counter? This is stupid. There's a lot of uh, lately. Just probably last three four weeks, I've seen tons of people doing that. Is it like let's see whose balls are the biggest? I contest? guess I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, congratulations! You you have a gun. They're dragging their they're dragging their junk up and down the you know, dug, I'm like, up and down the floor and for the aisle yeah. in front of the gun counter. <laughs> I don't know what they. Like, oh wow, that's cool. We got the same gun right here in the case. Yeah, you know, I'm fancy like, for you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It is what it is. I know everyone's got their thing. I mean, I'd love, I'd love to hear people's. You know, that 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 could be a whole series if I get people to get involved. Their Wally Walk stories. No, well, though, just the first time. What it felt oh, like first the first time. time they carried a firearm. Yeah. I mean, that would be, uh, that would be that would be interesting. I'd love to hear people's stories. Um, it's the international shoot me first symbol. That's right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. If you're showing, if you're showing your gun, I. And as far yeah. as printing, though, I don't think that's that. Uh, whatever. I pay attention to it, but it is what it is. It's. I appendix carry now, so I actually probably print. I print, but it's harder to see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I think. So, a, what are you looking at my junk? The good. Are you hol- looking at my junk. Why a good you looking holster at my makes the world a difference too. A what? Know? A, a good, good holster. Good holster and a good belt. Yeah world of difference if you're worried about printing so the only guy that's ever called me out is the guy that teaches my class he that that does a law enforcement portion of my yeah. class for me he'll tell me he's like you carrying your gun today i see it i see it i'm like just freaking leave me alone stacy <laughs> just leave me alone <laughs> i was like you you know what to look for you're looking for that right but uh, yeah 98 point nine percent of the people out there don't even realize do you so i talk about how printing is not a big deal to me but i don't know if it's the same way but when i lived down in kansas if you were in oklahoma printing was illegal 
Wow. You had, if you were going to carry a gun concealed, they, 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 law enforcement officer or anyone better not be able to see that you're carrying a gun because it was 100% illegal. Jeez. That's you'd get, yeah, you'd get in trouble for that. For that was, concealed carrying or yeah, just, the, conceal, just printing? Con, no. Oh, okay. uh, concealed carrying if you were printing. Oh, okay. That was, that was in there. That was like in, written in their law. Wow. You could not print at all. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard to do in that state when Oklahoma is about 100% humidity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah tornadoes. and no, just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, I don't know. I didn't go down there a whole lot, but they were, they're brutal on that stuff. Brutal. Aren't they uh, constitutional carry now? They may I be. I think Oklahoma's they one They may of be. Them. One of the best ways not to print, at least back in the day, was it still is today. You know, you wear your T-shirt, then you wear just a real thin lightweight button down shirt over the top yeah. of it and just leave it just leave it un, 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 untucked un, un, or uh, untucked yeah. unbuttoned even yeah, right yeah a lot of, a lot of people do that anymore i don't even care it is what it is wow but that's your business so it's my business quit looking at my junk <laughs> no, appendix here don't look at my junk <laughs> so we had something else i wanted to talk about i can't freaking remember what it is now dude i lost well, it. it wasn't looking at your junk i know quit that looking at, looking at my freaking junk <laughs> I totally lost what I was going to talk about, but that's Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. Yeah. J- James likes his Hawaiian. Oh, it's Magnum. So, it's so Magnum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnum makes a good point. So, actually, a shirt with with stripes and print and stuff on it breaks it up. It, it does. It, yeah. it breaks it up. It breaks it up so you can't see printing. That's that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Camouflage. Camouflage. I don't know. So so Magnum can. Can small the back carry his 1911 without his holster. And his, I'm kidding. He I'm doesn't. Like, what? Uh, that's he, how Magnum, no, he's got a holster. That's how Magnum. <laughs> that's how Magnum used to do it. Right. Magnum that's PI. true. Yeah. Dang yeah. right. Freaking Magnum PI. I used to be Marine Tone. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think what else I need to chat chat about. Uh, useless information. Yeah. You know. We have some useless. When are you going to come over and shoot again? That's a good question because i've got all this ammo and it's sitting there saying hey shoot me shoot me you know you know where i live i do (laughs) you know i'm not that much further down the road from your house that means i have to clean my guns again (laughs) no you don't just clean them once a year like i do oh okay yeah bacon grease clean them once a year got it i need to pull that thing out and uh shoot it again yeah Get, get proficient with that high point i want to yeah that's i need to so hey so so i'm gonna remind everyone I've only got two videos up, but I'm on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I'm on uh, Ding Dong or something. Yeah, whatever the other one You're is. You're a Ding Dong. I am a Ding Dong. That's what it is. I'm on TikTok. And I'm going to tell you, the first video I made has saved some lives. It uh, saved well, some fingers. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's saved, I, I think it did. It saved some fingers. I've In a roundabout way, I think I it did. I got a response video. It wasn't a direct response, mind no, you. No, but, but I, did I, think get, I think the word kind of probably got out. The word got, got out, out and, and this person actually, um, they got rid of their belly band, and they ordered a nice Kydex holster, one that's going to eliminate them losing their fingers. Mm-hmm. And I'm proud of that. I saved a life. Uh, yeah. I guess the potential's there for sure. <laughs> it is. It is there. It is there. Well, it is because I, you know, it was funny. This brings up a good point. I'll keep I've, talking. I've been watching this. We're going for two hours. I've been watching this show. <laughs> um, I just, it's been out forever. Band of Brothers. Okay. I don't know it's, if it's I on HBO ever Max. I've seen that. Yeah. It came out after like Saving Private Ryan and all that. Anyway, it's a World War II documentary type series, you know. But um, anyway, this guy, he finally, he's looking for a Luger. You know, he's trying to get a Luger off of one of the German soldiers. Finally gets one, and he's going around showing it off to everybody. And he goes to put it in his pants. Oh, my gosh. And shoots his, you know, femoral artery oh. and dies. So, yeah, potentially you did save a life. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. I very much did. So that so. just reminded me of that. So it's a good you, show. Go check out my, t- my TikTok <laughs> channel. I should probably... um Make some more videos. We we talked about that. Yeah, we we got a character in mind and everything. We do, we yeah. do. I, I got to get my tac vest for you and everything. Yes, tactical, tactical tube socks. <laughs> there you go. So anyhow, I want to appreciate uh, tell everyone I appreciate you for tuning in and watching us on YouTube Live. I really appreciate that. Um, thanks for subscribing to the podcast. If you do, share it with your friends and family. Like always, it's the only way the podcast is going to grow. But 
we'll be here. I'll be here regardless <laughs> every, every week. Now, I do want to shout out there. I don't know that I am actually going to be able to do a podcast this coming weekend. You got to run? I've got a race. Yeah, I'm yeah. leaving on Friday, and I won't be getting back till Sunday. On a jet plane? On a no, no, okay. and a Chevy pickup. All right, cool. In a Chevy pickup, me and my 15 year old are heading out to run a 55k, so 34 miles um, along the Continental Divide. Wow! So, kind of looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. And then afterwards, I get my mandatory like 12 hours of eating whatever the hell I want, as much as I want, and then I get sick about noon. That's on Sunday. mandatory. I, that's what I that I allow myself to. That's cool. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't allow myself to do that very much. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to that. So I don't know if I'll get a show out uh, the weekend. And I might push it off, and it might be like beginning of the next week or something. But um, just thought I'd throw that out there, let everybody know that. But thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing the podcast. I do appreciate that. Share it on your social media. If you got any comments or questions or anything like that, you can get a hold of me. You can call me. You can text me. Area code six two zero seven nine four six two two three. That's area code six two zero. 794-6223. I'm always on my phone. It's always ready to go. Um, what else? What am I missing? Uh, Anything? Just am I... Shout out to some of our listeners. You hey, know, like yes. I... James and uh, Kylan, obviously, they're commenting. I love comments. That's, oh, yeah. It kind of helps us out with the show. Yeah, it, it is, um, it's it's fun. Well, um, I like that. Mo over in Boston area, obviously. She's fun. Mo. She's so fun. Is he going to go? So. Pocket con, yeah. Holland. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna freaking hate that. Okay, well, uh, you guys, everyone have a good Fourth of July. I don't know if you're doing your festivities today or not. We kind of get to spread them out over the entire weekend. Um, I'm gonna wake up, do a little fishing in the morning, cool. come back home, eat some lunch, and enjoy the fireworks. I'm gonna feed my dogs anti-anxiety pills. You're gonna drug them? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> okay, until then, you everyone have a good, safe 4th of July. Don't shoot your firearm straight up in the air. Bad things happen when the bullet comes back down. And I want to see everyone back here in a few weeks, and I want everyone to have their fingers. It, okay. To have their Firecrackers, fing- though. I'm just saying. What? It's firecracker day. You need to light them and then get rid of them. Oh. Okay. That's the way it needs to be. Just don't lap just don't wrap your hand around it. Hey right? James thinks we're badass. Well yeah, yeah, I don't know if I go that far. Well, we've got <laughs> we've got him fooled. Yeah. <laughs> well thanks James. Thanks everyone. We are it's starting to get a little smell a little gamey in this room and it's a little hot. Sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay guys, we'll see you later. Bye.